Hi, welcome back to Belly Oh So Pregnant. Glad to see you here again. And I just come to give you a quick message about get off your back. As you know, all most TV shows, ads, anything dealing with pregnancy, um, and somebody's going to labor, the first thing you do is they show a bed and the mom's in the bed. So we're kind of like programmed or it's been normalized to do that, but I'm here to tell you to get off your back. Even though the when you walk into the admittance room and you change into your outfit and well smock or whatever, um, the bed is right in the center of the room. Plus, the nurses lead you there. Whoever you're with feels like you need to be there, and it's like everybody's leading you to the room. I mean, to the bed, and of course, the bed is sticking out, saying, "Hey, come see me," you know. Because you're tired, you're, 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 your body's going through some things, you're processing what's going on. So right now, you just want to just like let the load off some kind of way. That's good, you know, and it's also good to rest and things like that. But while you're resting, while you're processing what's going on, just elevate your, your bed a little bit um, or a lot. You know, put it at an angle, whatever angle you want to do, whether it's obtuse angle or whether it's a straight upright 90 degree angle, whatever it is, or if it's a straight stand up, you know, 180 degrees up, that is gonna help your body out a lot. Instead of going against gravity, where you're laying on your back, and gravity's like, oh, so this baby's head, butt, elbow, shoulder needs to be put down into your backbone? Okay, I can do that, and you just lay there. <laughs> you know, um, now you will be getting tested and analyzed and things like that. And of course, the best way for um, OBGYN or a nurse to do all these things for their convenience, not yours, but is to, you know, put you in these positions where you might have not can move. You might have an epidural and you're like told to stay in the bed. You still can, can sit your seat up or sit your, your uh, chair up. You can even be monitored on an actual chair. Just pull the chair closer to the monitor and have the uh, nurse strap you in that way instead of strapping you in the bed. The cords can only go so far, so that's why I said just drag a chair. Usually there's one chair um, in a labor and delivery room. So use everything that you have to sit up right, whether it's the pillows, whether it's the side of a wall, whether it's a birthing partner, um, the midwife, the doula, use them to, to uh, hang on them, to hold you up, to squat with you, um, any way to get you moving and shaking because birth is meant for your hips to move, not stay still because in the past, especially when um, hospitals start taking over births, um, because they quote that it's safer for the mom, it's safer for the baby, it's cleaner, you know, yada, yada, yada. It's a whole drama story behind that. We'll get to that maybe in another video. But um, a lot of uh, women have broken their coccyx bones because they have been retained, because they've been told to birth into the bed and laying flat um, uh, and, and uh, prisons where women are shackled to have birth. Of course, things are changing now but it's only been a few years ago when this has happened. And I wouldn't buy it because if we want to put the whole world in totality, there is still women being shackled while having a baby. Like a woman's really gonna get up and run while she's having a baby. I don't know, no, an well I do know animals that can suck the baby back up, you know, to, to, to move to a safer place. But these humans, we don't, yeah, once it gets going, it gets going. There is ways that you could stop it, but the natural process is to keep it going, right? So upright positions, ankle positions are actually working with gravity. You're going with the wave of gravity. And also it would increase your contractions. Don't get scared though. You're gonna have to go through those waves, all right? Because if you try to decrease the tractions by laying down and not really letting that gravity, that heavy, heavy energy help you, then you might, prolong your labor and when you prolong your labor especially when you're in a hospital you want a clock you know just like when you're at work you want a clock when you're in labor right <laughs> in the hospital you also are on a clock so it's a certain amount of period where they will allow you to go a certain amount of days once you get admitted that they will allow you to labor 
So in order to, and then other things can, can range from that, and we'll talk about that too, with a long, drawn out labor where it doesn't necessarily have to. Um, so upright positions, you're gonna feel the contractions, they will come harder, but that's what you want. You want the contractions to come. You wanna be able to get up and move around. You wanna go to the bathroom and just hang over the, the sink or sway on your partner or doula or you want to go into the bathtub and sit down or the spa, um, at the spa that's the jacuzzi and just sit up and let those bubbles and let that warm, you know, soothe your body and assist you. So there's other ways that you can be assisted, but you can really help your own self, especially if you're laboring alone with this whole COVID situation. Um, if it's a surprise, you know, birth, you know, that's coming out and nobody's there to really say, do this, do that, do that. Your instincts is going to tell you to move. It's going to tell you to shift, whether it's shift to one side, shift to the other, whether it's squat um, down, hold something while squatting. It's going to allow you to, to um, not allow you, but it's going to send you signals that, that yes, this is the right thing to do. And it may come to a time where somebody tells you, okay, we have to monitor you right now. And your body is like, I do not want to lay down right now. You can kindly tell the uh, nurse or the midwife who ever seen you, you know, okay, can you give me about 10 more minutes or five more minutes? That way you can kind of coerce yourself back into the bed or like I said, get a chair. You don't necessarily have to get in the bed. Um, as humans, period, we have been programmed to be comfortable. You need to be in a bed or something as like a bed, like a futon or a comfy couch or somewhere you can just lay out. But in labor, you want to put your body to work and how you put your body to work, which is already doing naturally, but to help it out, is to actually get up and walk, get up and dance, um, get up and take the showers, get up and sit in the bathtub, go sit on the toilet. I love the toilet when labor, and they have those hand bars on the side, or even if you're at home, you know, you got the, the side of the sink, you know, hold on to. So the bathroom is a wonderful place to stay upright. Um, you know, sitting in a corner, you know, is, is a wonderful place um, to hold up right with maybe a chair in your back so it's easy for you to get up and get down, especially if you're, you're birthing alone or you're having people come in and out but nobody's really there for you. Hence, this is why everybody should have a doula and it should be free, okay? <laughs> That's a whole other story, right? So stay upright, start practicing now some labor techniques that would allow you to um, labor um, in a comfortable, safe way, but you're also helping gravity. You're also helping your body out. You're also helping your baby out. When you do stuff like that, your body's like, game on, we're about to get this baby out. Like your body gets really excited. That's why those contractions start hitting. Baby's excited, like I'm almost home, let's go. But when you're just laying back, you're stalling because you're basically, based on your position, you're telling the energies around you to help you that yeah this baby's gonna come out my back yeah so I'm just gonna lay here now when you have an epidural or if you have a complicated pregnancy where you can't move around because they give you very logical um, explanation you know it makes sense it's not like oh you can't um, get up because breakfast is not served yet you know that is like not rational you know but you, you understand if you get up you know your blood pressure is going to go high because this is a or if you get up blah, 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 blah. right you get what i'm saying but even in that situation use that just use it as much as you can just try starting to, to, to teach yourself and especially when you're in your third trimester you don't try to teach yourself because it happens well you can't even lay down anymore in your own bed like you have to sit in the lazy boy you may even have to go out and buy one you have to sit up on the couch like in that corner piece so you can prop your head up and your leg and you know things like that um so you're already used to not sleeping in the bed most of the times so or if you sleep in the bed you're not sleeping in there for eight hours you get up every so often um, so so often because that weight is shifted on one side even if you're not consciously aware of it because you sleep but you, your body shifts to the other side just un unknowingly because of that weight and you wake up in the middle of the night you gotta empty out your bladder yada 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 there's movement you might have to go get you a little snack and then you come back and you try it all again that's the same situation when you come into labor. Just just because it's that focal point, that center table with the flowers on it, like, oh, come sit around me. You know what I mean? You, you want to look at it like, I see you. I will use you when I need you. But right now, especially when I got the energy, 
let me move these hips. Your hips are separating at, at uh, your third trimester, I mean your fourth trimester. So, and this is where the waddle comes in. It's not just the weight um, of the baby and you growing and everything else. It's also because your hips are starting to separate to help that big head come on out. And the coccyx bones or even the, the, the hip bone structure itself through time, even if you want to go to the homo erectus times and compare it, which is like the first person to walk, you know, upright or mammal to walk upright and stay upright. Uh, the, the hip bones have changed over time. Um, and now we're in this era where they don't, we don't have small brains anymore. We have more bigger brains, but our, our, our bones are kind of structured a little bit different than it was um, back in those days, right? The homo erectus days, right? Um, where they still had the ability to be, you know, have animalistic natures and use those animalistic natures still, but still be able to function, like climb trees and stuff like that, but still be able to walk upright. Um, well, we don't do all that anymore like they used to do. Um, we're just the upright, but start to practice some of those animalistic uh, uh, positions. You think about positions, even if you want to talk about, you know, the hoo-hoo, you know, the do what it do, <laughs> to get these babies in here, that's a, a common thing, change positions, even though Leah was telling you about that, right? Because even if it's like everybody seems uh, or deems it as, ooh, that's just being all, you know, creative or something like that, a lot of times it is because it's painful in certain ways, in certain situations with certain people and things like that, so you have to switch up positions and figure it out, right? So, same thing with pregnancy, switch those positions, change those positions. Women's bodies are, are here to do those metamorphoses, those changes, those transitions. And if anything, compared to a male gender, female gender, we are naturally gifted to do this. So use your hips, use your power of the hips. They don't call it the catwalk for nothing, honey. We are naturally given these hips, and that's why we walk, even if we're not trying to be cute and sexy. We walk that way because our, our bodies are more at an angle. The hip bone structure is at an angle versus a meal. So we walk with that that waddle. But of course, it's more obvious when you, you're pregnant because you've got the extra weight that happens so quickly and your body's still adjusting to that, still trying to grow a baby, um, trying to uh, keep you alive, keep the baby alive. Your body got a lot of things going on. And the waddle comes in not just because of the, the way we are shaped naturally, whether I don't care who you are, where you're from, we're all women, we all got this kind of shape when it all what was that when it all comes down to it. But when you're pregnant, your hip separates around your, your fourth trimester, the hormones come and they kind of loosen up those tendons to get the bigger head out. Now what's gonna happen a hundred a thousand years from now, two thousand years from now, I can only expect that the brain is probably gonna be bigger. As it, you know, so if we want to look at the history, how, how it has grown, um, we're looking at the technology now, the IG thing. So, and even look at the kids nowadays. You know, kids are being born just geniuses now. You're like, wait, wait, whoa! You know, they can work your phone better than you can work your phone, and they only four and a half years old and have not even started preschool yet. So, it would only I can only imagine two thousand years from now the human race brains will be a little bit bigger um the hips of course with women will, will will change to accommodate the size of the skull um as it has done in the past um but since you know your body is naturally gifted to do these things um help it out help it out you know just like i say help your body out by taking vitamins help your body out when you're in labor and delivery to move your body Okay. Even if you, you um, are exhausted and tired, you can take a nap, that's fine. You know, lay sitting up, turn on the side, turn the other side laid up, switch it around, you know. And for those who are birth partners out there, you might have to wake them up and be like, honey, maybe you should move to the other side. Or um, daughter, maybe you should move to the other side. Or grandbaby, maybe you should move to the other side. Or maybe we should get up and walk. You're going to have to encourage them to keep going to finish that marathon. So once again, you wanna angle your body according to how your body is built. Um, and the more angling, especially the more closer you get to that straight up 180 degree angle, then your labor, the contraction is gonna hit, gravity is gonna help you 
by putting that baby's head right where it needs to be so that way your body can respond in an efficient way by dilating and getting those dilations done. So um, next time I believe we'll talk about different positions. I don't know, but I'll just talk about whatever hits me at the moment. And, um, but if you have any comments, any questions, anything like that, please, you know, email me, billysoulpregnant at gmail.com, or you can comment down below, or you can hit me up at IG, um, at Billyoso, or um, Twitter, or Facebook as well. So I will talk to you later. I will talk to you later. <laughs> I will talk to you later. Have a wonderful day. Manifest birth, manifest life. Happy birthday. Bye-bye.